I have had to take coins out of flips that were basically oil sludge, you know, for years and years because whoever kept them, and now I'm talking like numismatic coins, whoever kept them, put them in a plasticized flips. Do not do that. We don't use plasticized flips. Um, it's just, it's, it's a bad place to start, even if you're not doing capsules. Welcome to Silver Pros, sponsored by Hero Bullion. I'm your host, Silver Dragons. I'm joined by my co-host, Yankee Stacking. How's it going, Yankee? What's up, Silver Dragons? How you doing, man? Hey, hey, good to, good to have you here. And also, we're joined by Jake Haugen, the CEO, president, owner, founder of Hero Bullion. Jake, how are you tonight? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's great to have you, Jake. Yeah, and, and this is a great topic, too. We're talking about how to safely store your silver so we want to get your insight uh this is a question that we get asked constantly right yankee every month i get dozens of questions about how to handle our silver and where to put it and how to keep it safe so this is very timely and i hope people watching we're going to really learn something from it yeah you know i think the first thing we should probably talk about is vaulting versus storing at home because this is such a big consideration uh what are your initial thoughts on that jake well, you know, the, the, the truth of it is, uh, I feel like everybody has a number, like what number they are comfortable with storing at their home. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that most people, most people who are stacking silver, uh, gold, they're going to want to store some of it at home, have it, you know, very easily accessible to themselves. Um, but you know, when, when you start talking larger numbers and you, you know, as the years go by, you, you know, your commitment continues, uh, in the stacking realm. Uh, you're going to hit a number that's going to make you uncomfortable. And that's, you know, that can be a point of stress for a lot of people. So I think the very first thing you have to identify is how much are you comfortable with keeping at home? And so then you get into the discussion of home storage versus storing somewhere else. Can I interrupt you just for a second? Yep. So there's a number you said. So we get to a certain amount of <laughs> silver and yeah, it can be kind of bulky. We're going to get to the point in which we're going to actually say, boy, I got to have this stored somewhere else. That number is really, really, really high for me. I don't know about yep. USD. I mean, yep. like, like seven figures, high. right? I mean, <laughs> I yeah. don't know if I'll ever reach it. <laughs> so so then then you're you're confronted when it when it comes to vaulting. There are plenty of options out there. I will just say um, I'm not a huge fan of uh, safety deposit boxes, keeping mm -hmm. them there. Um, you know, there's there's just there's too much oversight there. Um, now there are private storage facilities all over the country, really reputable companies that can store bullion for you. Um, I think I'm in the same camp as, as you guys are when it comes to that in, in terms of, you know, what are you comfortable keeping at, at your house or really within reach essentially. Um, and so that's when you have to get creative guys. That's when you, you need to start to get the gears turning in your head of how are you going to keep you and yours protected? Just one of the more thoughts on the vaulting side, because I've uh -huh. had this discussion with people, large net worth people, but also mm -hmm. some people that have a significant, significant amount of retirement assets. And they, even with that, they don't want it in paper assets. They want it in physical, but the laws that are in place now do not allow you to be the custodian of that gold in your IRA say. So, so there is a place I I've seen it. For some people in some circumstances where vaulting does make sense, um, also with people that have, uh, you know, their assets are in a foreign location and they have issues, try to repatriate. There there are times, right, where vaulting might make sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if you have if you have assets in a 401k, mm -hmm. you don't want to take distribution of, of those assets <laughs> because that would be a taxable event for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there are a lot of people and an increasing number of people um, who are uncomfortable with, the, with, you know, the traditional equities markets, yes. uh, you know, keeping, keeping their money in a, let's say a mutual fund. They feel like the stock market is, is overpriced right now and they want to move their, their money somewhere else. They don't like you know, they don't like having it in cash. Um, you can keep it within the, the uh, 401k, but you need a self-directed IRA. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually purchase bullion with your 401k funds uh, through a self-directed IRA. And so there are a number of companies that can that can assist you in that. Part of that process is designating a who your who your bullion dealer is. And so that's where we come in and, and we facilitate. We send essentially the bullion 
to the storage facility where the custodian, like you said, uh, Yankee, uh, you, if you have assets in your 401k, you are not allowed to take delivery of the bullion because then that would con that would be considered a taxable event, right? Until you're old like me. And at some point you can, <laughs> you can have a delivery. Yeah, at some this point you can take a distribution right. for sure. This, this is, yeah. how, you know, I'm a prepper stacker. I want this stuff right close to me. When things go sideways, I don't want to be worried about some third party gaining access and having some issues. Well, it's just not my my first choice. You know, and, and the other thing I would say is, you know, when it comes to precious metals, a lot of us have this mindset where if you can't hold it, if I can't yeah. pick it up, put yeah. it in my hands, then I don't own it. So if it's in some vault... You know, mm -hmm. is it really mine? I just, I, I again, I have a piece of paper that says I, I own it, right? I promise it's yours. Sometimes they even, you can pay extra to have it allocated in a separate area of the book. None of this is something I want to do. None of it. Right. That's fair. That's absolutely fair. And so, like I said earlier, this is when you guys have to get creative, right? You, mm -hmm. you, you need to take a step back, kind of separate the emotion from it and, and consider uh, the context of your own situation. Number one, are you a natural target, right? Um, and, and what I mean by a natural target is, uh, do you, do you have a YouTube channel? <laughs> oh, do you talk okay. a lot about precious metals, right? Um, do you, uh, you know, do you, you had you have, to go there, didn't you? Jay? <laughs> <laughs> Did your license plate say nine, 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 fine. You <laughs> might be a natural target then. So let's avoid those types of things as much as you can. No, I'm, I just here with you guys. Um, you guys, you guys don't show your face. Obviously I'm, I'm more in the, in the public eye when it comes to this stuff. And so I have to address it differently. Right. Um, but, um, it, there, there are other things that kind of can kind of keep people off. You know, do you live in an affluent area? Do you have a big house? Those types of things are just immediate triggers for for thieves and people who would, who would potentially put you and yours at risk by trying to uh, steal your bullion. The one thing to uh, that you must understand, and that is the stacker's conundrum, is information. Who knows you have bullion? Do you evangelize for bullion? Do you talk to a lot of people about bullion. How big is that circle that knows that you love bullion, that you stack bullion? Okay, let's try and keep that as small as possible. And uh, essentially, the more the more people that that know, the more uh, potential leaks you have in your boat, right? Yeah, I, I um, like the way you put that because <clears throat> we all want to talk about silver. We believe in it. You know, we, the dollar is dying, and and we want to tell our family, our friends. But you got to be safe, and so that goes to storing it at your house where do i put it do i hide it do i put it in a safe um it's it's for me it's kind of easy to start with the knots where do i not want this number one i do not want this where a a plumber an electrician someone who's working on my house is going to be uh have access to right all that's off limits right uh if so I've, I've heard of some people storing it in a crawl space under their house mm, not a good idea don't do that, please. Um, so think about where people, even though they might be infrequent up in your attic where your HVAC is, something like that, uh, don't put it up there. That is not where you want it because you don't know those people. Those people, uh, while they may see people's attics all day long, your little chest or box or whatever it might be, um, it may stick out to them. Okay, so keep it away from there, right? Um, the, the other thing is I would avoid things like the little hidden... Uh, hidden safes, a book safe. Okay. Those are, those are very well known. Where's a criminal going to look? They're going to pull a bunch of books off the shelf. Don't put it in a book safe. Um, uh, another common location that, you, that I know you guys know about is like a freezer, put it in your freezer and, and, and freeze it at the back of the freezer. Okay. Well, that's well known. Everyone knows that. So let's, let's assume that's all. We're not doing that. We're not putting it in our sock drawer. Uh, we're not putting it in the, the bottom corner of the closet, right? All of that stuff is off. Limits. Not under the mattress. Not under, Please. not under the mattress, not in the couch. Right. You know, you might think putting some silver down in your couch cushions, your, your couch may get flipped over, you know, cause it, just assume that, I don't know, a, a triceratops or a T-Rex is going to run through your living room and, and destroy it. Okay. Anything that they're going to easily destroy, flip over anything like that. Don't do that. Um, a good rule of thumb is to try to one, deploy some target hardening. Okay. There's, there's always the discussion of cameras. If I have exterior cameras around my house, does that 
tee off people? Does it provide me more protection than information that it provides a potential criminal? Okay, well, why are there cameras there? Right? That's the that's the immediate question. Right. Um, camera systems are very affordable. From like a monthly payment standpoint, you can get, you know, your house lit up with cameras for less than fifty dollars a month. Let's say, okay. So you have the discussion surrounding cameras. When it comes to hiding it, I like the idea of layering, right? Um, so where it's not just going to be, you know, one step to get access to your bullion. You're going to have to do, let's say, two, three, four potentially things uh, to do. So let's say uh, floor safes. Okay, there are floor safes out there. Um, floor safes under uh, under carpet, let's say, with a piece of furniture on top. That could be a potential place. Now, I, you know, I gave that away, right? Okay, just think that. Think layers deep. That was kind of the easy layup one. Think layers. Where can you where can you uh, leverage layers uh, physically to prevent this and and require multiple steps? You have to remember. And again, put your put yourself inside the mind of a criminal. They're in a hurry. They don't want to get caught. They're just going to rip everything that they can as fast as they can, and their eyes are going to be all over. It's probably going to be dark, you know. So put all your precious metals in the master bedroom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No. Well, I mean, that's the thing. You know, are you home? Are you not home? Yeah. These are all things you need to consider. Um, and so I, I like the idea of layers. And one thing that you didn't talk about was um, the safe behind a picture. A lot of people know about that, too. All your pictures are going to get ripped off the wall. So, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That, is that where all of your gold and silver is, Jake? You Come on, Jake. <laughs> you Come on. We're going to get it out of you before this is over. <laughs> no. So let, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Now, uh, that while having a safe behind a picture, it's kind of cliche, right? We've been seeing it in movies and television for decades at this point. Uh, let's talk about the idea of a dummy safe. What do you guys think about a dummy safe? I think it's a great idea. And in fact, it would be kind of cool to have maybe a wall safe that is a dummy safe. So they spend their time trying to get at it. And then yep. it's not much in there with any. Yeah, would that, would that be enough to you know, per se, uh, satisfy a criminal and say, "I found it! Boom, <laughs> here it is." Now, uh, you know, if if you're if you're in the house, obviously there's going to be weapons and threats involved, and so that could potentially be something that you offer up. Um, and and I think it's a very good idea. I don't think it's a good idea to store the real value there. Okay? Yeah, I, I would say too. Even you could have multiple <laughs> dummy safes. Uh, maybe a gun cabinet could double as a dummy safe or something like that. And then, you know, that one in the in the uh, the closet, that's a great dummy safe because everyone thinks they're going to have jewelry and stuff in there. And, you know, you could put costume jewelry and some fake bullion you know, or whatever. But, uh, yeah, multiple dummy safes, also another option. And yep. you can go all out on a safe. So if you have like a massive gun safe, something that's bolted down, that would take an enormous amount of time to either move or open. That's another approach. Most safes, even even very affordable safes, uh, you know, your typical eight gun gun safe, it, that would be like a class C safe. Right. Um, most of those uh, allow you to bolt to the, to the ground, okay? So, I mean, really what you're trying to do in doing that is to prevent um, a criminal from essentially walking out with it, right? You don't want them walking out uh, with, with your bullion. Um, hopefully what's inside is so heavy that they can't walk out with it anyways. Right. Um, <laughs> if you're doing your job, but yeah, let's assume you're not home. Um, you, you want, you want to buy time, right. And the more they have to work at it, the, the longer, uh, the opportunity for them is to be caught. Right. And so, um, yeah, you, you, you want to anchor it to the ground. Let's say, let's not keep it in one of those little shoebox kind of safes. That's just for like a handgun. I've seen those, you know, a lot of people have used those. I actually see those on YouTube here and there. And it's just, it, it's, it's not good for long-term storage, right? It's not good. Uh, it's not going to provide you anything because it's, it's, you know, potentially lighter than a briefcase. They could just pick it up and walk out, right? Yeah, the heavier, the better. And, and one thing too, that I've seen people uh, <laughs> will take those like Olympic weights, like the steel weights, and they'll just throw those in the bottom of their safe. So even if you have a 500 pound safe, you could pretty easily turn that into a thousand pound safe even after it's bolted to the ground and you know, then you're good to go. What do you, what do you guys think about, uh, I don't know, let's call them midnight gardeners. What do you think about <laughs> digging a hole in your yard and burying your bullion? I'm not a big fan of it. 
Well, the problem for me and Yankee is we need to put it in our videos. So <laughs> to go dig it up and then, you know, show it off and then bury it again. I'd be doing a lot of gardening. Right. Yeah. But yep. I mean, also, you know, you don't want to forget where it is. <laughs> See, yeah. the, the way I look at it is if if you are uh, known to be, let, let's say if I was a, a, a coin dealer, someone known in the public eye, uh, to have potentially have this, I can see that uh, most of the time, if you keep your OPSEC to a minimum, right, and you're very careful about who you tell, most of the threats that you'll face with break ins are people trying to get the quick cash and jewelry. Mm-hmm. They're not there to spend a long time, you know, mm-hmm. eight minutes max. They're trying to get in and out. They go right to a certain location in master bedroom. They're trying to get it quickly. Like you said, you're trying to buy time. So for that, I don't see a huge benefit of getting the PVC pipes and, you know, mm-hmm. digging, you know, at least three feet down, especially up here in the north with when we have uh, cold temperatures and freezing ground and, and trying to do that. It's logistically a nightmare and you don't want to, have problems with with finding it later or some yeah some yeah and then out. potentially you're 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 leaving your heirs let's mm-hmm. say with uh that task of going on that treasure hunt so um I, I i think we're aligned there i don't think it's a good idea now i i would say that you know burying it uh or you know putting it somewhere underneath like an outside garage might be a good idea i know that's that's may, may be kind of a controversial statement but that way physically it's away from you you still have access you could put it down, you know, under some under the ground in, in some type type of shed where it's protected. You can go in there and you can dig. You can get it out uh, with some kind of protection, so someone someone can't see you actually doing that. Like, you know, why is Yankee out there digging at, at two a.m.? No, they they wouldn't question it. <laughs> <laughs> They're used to it. So so I guess also multiple locations could be a good idea. You know, don't have all your stash in one place. If you do have yeah. the midnight gardening location, maybe put half your stash there and the other half in, in the hidden room, in the, the big safe and that kind of stuff, right? Yep. Yep, absolutely. But the key is time. That's why I'm a huge fan of really, you know, addressing the layers. You know, l- let's say each layer buys you two minutes, three yep. minutes. Yep. You know, there I, I, I find it hard to believe that many criminals are going to, Look, to, think to to tear carpet up, to you know, flip, uh, move a big piece of furniture, a big uh, big bureau, or you know, a china cabinet, whatever it is. I think they're going to be hard pressed to actually do to do that work because they're they're snatch and grab. They're trying to get out of there. So, so uh, one of the other questions that we had for you, Jake, is let's say they have their hiding place or their safe or whatever. Do they need to take additional precautions so that their silver doesn't get destroyed while it's just sitting there? I mean, is it going to tarnish? Do I need to put everything in a capsule? What are your thoughts on that? Man, that is that is such a a, a deep conversation. Uh, we can hit some of the some of the really important parts of it. Okay, so when it comes to silver, the thing that I've I've always thought is funny: if it's silverware and it oxidizes, we call it tarnish, right? Everyone's heard about tarnish, um, and that that connotates something bad. If it's, uh, let's say, a numismatic coin, and it and it oxidizes, we call it toning, and that connotates good. <laughs> some people really like toning, right? I do. I do. There are some dealers in the in, in the U.S. here that specialize in toned coins because you get some fabulous colors in them, right? Uh, when it comes to new bullion. We don't, we generally don't want these to oxidize. You want them to stay, stay brilliant. And so mm-hmm. you get something like this that comes in a capsule, right? Mm-hmm. Capsules are great. Um, the, the main capsule that we sell is an air type capsule. And that's because air is your enemy, right? So we're trying to keep right. Uh, right. air away. We're trying to keep these, uh, the bullion from uh, getting oxidized, right? Yeah, that's that's a really good point because this is a uh, <laughs> sometimes people get confused as to what is calling that toning or tarnish, and it really it's is the same thing. Chemically, the, it's the it's, same thing, right? Right, but it's it's the air, it's the sulfur in our atmosphere, even more than touching. That's what causes the the tarnish. Okay, but but if I have like you know a semi numismatic coin or something, of course I want to keep that pristine. But what about just my generic maples or eagles or even junk silver? Do I need to worry about that kind of stuff? 
I mean, um, if, if, if it matters to you, I would say, you know, for, for, for junk silver, you know, we're talking Yankee, you got a pile of, of, of junk 90 up there. We don't care about that. Let, let the air get to it. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it's been in, it's been in numerous people's pockets and hands and it's, it's been used for commerce for years and years. We're not, it's, about earn, it's earned its tarnish. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's earned its miles. Uh, I'm a big fan of the U S mint tube here. You know, these tubes snap on in a pretty firm way. They're going to keep air off of your products for the, uh, for the most part. Okay. Now, every time you open this, you're introducing fresh air to it. Right. And so, uh, you know, we all love our bullion. We want to look at it. We want to handle it. So we wear gloves, right? We wear gloves because your hands are not as clean as you think they are. They're going to leave deposits on there. You're going to have thumbprints on your bullion before long. If you don't wear gloves, um, I'm not actually a huge fan of the latex or the nitro gloves because your fingerprints actually, if, if you wear those gloves for more than 30 minutes, your fingerprints can actually uh, show through those, those plastic gloves. So I'm a big fan of the cotton gloves. Okay, they're good for numismatics as well as bullion. Here you have a maple tube. You know, these are very affordable. And also, let's say if you have five maples, this gives you a goal to fill the tube, right? You're going for that. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. The one thing I would say is even if you have gloves, try and just touch the edges, you know, like Yankee's doing right there. Because when you touch the face, you can scratch it a little bit with the micro scratches. But just, just please touch the edges. <laughs> That's the only thing I would say. Yeah. We're touching edges of coins. It's a beautiful so thing. Cool. Is there anything else people need, like those uh, little uh, packets that keep away the moisture in the air, like that kind of stuff? Is that important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like these. I've used these. I've used these for years. They come. Uh, they're silica gel packets. Very easy to use. Um, they are reusable. Um, so essentially, you would put this. You would you would crack this bag, uh, and and put this silica gel uh, pouch in the bottom of your safe. And that's going to keep moisture away. Think about it. If you, you know, uh, down in Texas here, it gets pretty humid during the summer. Right. And, uh, if you live in a place where there, where you're close to the, the ocean, where you get a lot of humidity, uh, you're going to want to keep, uh, keep that in check. And so these work great. This will actually turn pink in here and let you know that it's full. And then all, it, believe it or not, all you do is you go throw it in the oven and heat it up and it will, it's reusable. So these are great. Uh, I've used these for years. These ones, these ones are just, it's a different size for a smaller safe. Okay. Uh, these bigger ones for bigger safe and they're really affordable. I think something like this is less than 10, 10, $12. This is, you know, six, seven, $8, somewhere in that range. So those are great. One other question I have that people I'm assuming are going to be wondering, can your silver get too hot or too cold? Does it need to be temperature controlled or does that not really matter? Uh, I think outside of a fire, it really, it really doesn't matter. Um, silver, silver is pretty, pretty durable in that aspect. I wouldn't worry about it uh, too much, you know, especially on the cold side. I mean, really what your, uh, your concern with cold would be condensation. And if you're doing your job by keeping, you know, as much ox oxygen out of there as possible and, and you're, and you're keeping the humidity out of your uh, storage location, that should not be a problem for you. Let's say during the winter or the fall, you know, when it, when it gets cold, that should not be a problem. And any other thoughts, Jake, on storing silver? Yeah, I'm a big fan of capsules simply because I, I'd feel comfortable handing it to a younger person who might drop it. I'm not, I'm not going to be as worried about it. They can handle it. They can look at it up close, all those types of fun things. Um, one thing that you, that I recommend, you know, mo most times when you buy bullion, you're going to get it in one of these sleeves in the industry. We call these flips. Okay. Um, Flips come in all make. Uh, we only use non-plasticized flips. Uh, plasticized flips contain, you know, PVC. They they're softer. Oh, they feel higher. They feel higher quality. They're actually not for long-term storage because they will break down over the years. I've I've had to uh, take coins out of flips that were basically oil sludge, you know, for years and years because whoever kept them and now I'm talking like numismatic coins, whoever kept them, put them in a plasticized flips. Do not do that. We don't use plasticized flips. Um, it's just, it's, it's a bad place to start. Even if you're not doing capsules, uh, consider your flips as well. Now, the other thing I will say, um, you, we were talking about storage. Okay. This is another, another easy way to, to organize and store your bowling is just to buy one of these empty monster boxes. The thing that's cool about most of these monster boxes, 
is they're built to stack on one another very easily. Okay, they have these nice little notches here. You can stack on top of each other. Um, and, and you know, you load this up with bullion. It, it, it'll, it comes originally with 250 ounces of silver in the kangaroos. Um, and so that's not going to be too heavy that you can't move it around without having to open up and access it. Um, I like these. I like the empty monster boxes because, again, it's another, yeah. another barrier. I, love, I like that kind of stacking there, Jake. That's really cool. Do you, do you actually sell those empty uh, containers? Absolutely. Absolutely. We sell, we, we try and sell as much of that as we can. We understand that, you know, uh, you, you might have a goal to fill a monster box of maples. And so you start off with a roll full, right? And every week or every month, you're going to add a roll, whatever it is. Eventually, uh, you know, you're going to have enough to, to fill a monster box. And that can be kind of a, a cool experience. And um, yeah, so we definitely sell that. We definitely sell all that stuff that, that comes in. Uh, that we use up and rather than just i guess throw it in the landfill a lot of this stuff is made of hdpe so it's um i think it's a little bit harder to recycle some of them okay. um so rather than throw them away i think there's a use for them we got a big stack out here <laughs> so come and buy some right <laughs> that's awesome. hey i got one i got one last question final mm -hmm. one could you show us what's behind that picture <laughs> you, if you guys want to know the story of this picture there we go this, that is cool this picture Oh. is from a series that I did years ago. Um, this I'm, I'm, I'm Scandinavian uh, in my heritage. And so this is the great eagle. And the great eagle stand, er, er, perches at the top of the world tree. And this little guy is the squirrel that runs back and forth. There's a dragon underneath the roots of this tree. And the squirrel passes insults back and forth. Now, the, where this comes from is actually a series that I did uh, called the Nordic Creatures series uh, when I was at Provident years ago. Mm -hmm. And I actually got the artist to send me print number two. Wow. So he has he has wow. print number one. I have print number two. Um, just because I love this. I love this art. And uh, cool. it, uh, it was a cool it was a cool coin that we did. Really cool. Great. That's really awesome. <laughs> well, hey, Jake, we really appreciate you um, being on with us. We've learned so much. Um, and, you know, we want to say thank you to everyone uh, for watching, and we'll see you next time on Silver Pros. Stack like a pro.